Hey, making it happen DIY here. Got another project today with the Toyota Matrix. Let's get started. So the idle air control valve is down here. It's connected to your throttle body. And we're basically going to have to remove this breather hose to get to the throttle body and remove that so that we can get the uh, idle air control valve off. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the battery. Make sure you always remove the negative terminal first. Take the ground off of something that's powered not take the power off something that's grounded loosen up the clamp on the breather hose you got a 10 millimeter clamp right here and you also have one right here comes right on out and now you have a lot more room to work with remove the 10 millimeter bolt here that holds the cover on normally there's another one right here but mine broke off a hundred thousand miles ago anyway this seems to keep it in place just fine there goes the cover now that we've done that, we're gonna be able to go in here and remove the bolts here from the throttle body. It uses a 12 millimeter socket. I recommend using an extension and it makes it easy to get it out of there. Remove the clip on the throttle cable and get that out of the way here. You can just bend it off to the side. Now that I've removed all four bolts from the throttle body, you're going to want to remove the last bolt down here that's on this arm, and that way you can remove the entire thing. All right, and this whole arm just comes right on out, no problem. We can go ahead and undo the electrical connections. Just push down that tab. You got one right there, and you got one in the back right here. So now that those two are removed, we're going to pull this whole shebang off. But first thing we want to do is remove this hose right here as well. Remove the hose here. Now we have perfect access to pull our throttle body directly off. Now we got our throttle body off. There's a couple more hose clamps on the back of the idle air control valve. These idle air control valve hoses have coolant in them. So when you remove them, just be careful not to spill it everywhere. I have a oil pan underneath the vehicle and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it. So that way, in case any spills, I'll be able to catch it. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna anchor the hose up. All right, so I got the second hose anchored up here with the other on a hose and I got it out of the way here. The coolant stopped flowing. And uh, we're just gonna tilt this and make sure the rest of the coolant is out of that idle air control valve. Um, we're still connected to the throttle cable here, just so we don't have to mess with it. I got the whole thing off now. And now we finally have access to unscrew the idle air control valve from the throttle body. All right, guys, you gotta be careful on these screws. They're real soft and they strip extremely easily. I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove the throttle cable from the throttle body. It's as easy as just looping it around here and pulling it off. I tried using the vice grips to get it off and it wasn't budging, but I ended up buying a cold chisel and just hammered away at this till it created enough space here to be able to take my vice grips and twist it off. If you are in need of some new screws, it's the M58020 that's gonna fit. All right, so I went around with the rag and just cleaned everything up inside to make it look nice. Go ahead and clean the butterfly valve inside your throttle body. Over the years, this thing gets gunked up with carbon every time you push down on the pedal and open and close your butterfly valve. It's connected to the throttle cable on this spring load. And so just take a rag and clean it out and make it real nice so when you reinstall, you know it's functioning properly. All right, gonna go ahead and pop off this gasket and put the new one on. Just make sure it's nice and clean in there as well. Got the new gasket installed and getting ready to throw on the new idle air control valve. All right, with our nice new idle air control valve installed, we are ready to reattach our throttle body and put everything back together. Just careful not to spill much coolant got those two back on I'll go ahead and tighten them down now I'm gonna reinstall all the bolts to the throttle body make sure to reattach your arm here before putting the bolt through just make sure you take this hose and reattach it I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the throttle cable it's as easy as sticking the end of the cable back through its little groove 
and then sliding the cable up, reattaching it to the anchor, and then we're gonna bolt down nice and snug. We should have the same cable tension as we did when we started because we're just tightening this back down to how it was. So there's a second nut on the bottom that you may need a second wrench so that you can hold it in place while you twist the top nut tight. I'm gonna go ahead and bend back the throttle cable holder, slide that back into place. And now it's time to reattach the breather tube to the airbox and throttle body. By the way, the breather tube has an A for airbox and a T for throttle body. So when you reassemble it, you know which direction to put it back together. All right, don't forget to reattach your electrical connections. Any small amount of coolant that you caught under the car while doing this repair, you can just put right back into the coolant tank. Last thing, just gotta put the engine cover back on top, bolt it down. Reconnect this battery and see if this thing still works. All right, y'all, we are back in action. 242,000 miles going strong. And that's how you install a Toyota idle air control valve.